train cruise. Let's take a journey on some of the many trains that traverse the Japanese archipelago. Some scenes are unforgettable. Others will fill you with nostalgia. And beautiful vistas will lift your heart. Unknown parts of Japan are waiting for you to discover at the end of the line. In this episode, we travel from the metropolis of Osaka down to the mountains and seas of Wakayama Prefecture. We have a delightful encounter on an Osaka tram car. We travel through rugged terrain to the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Mount Koya. We walk through a dignified old graveyard. Well, how long they've been here, but you can feel the history. We ride a fun, cat-themed train. Meet a feline station master. And visit an old farming family. <laughs> so let's begin our journey to the cities, mountains, and seas of Osaka and Wakayama and meet some friendly people along the way. Kansai International Airport, the gateway to Western Japan. And our traveler for this episode has just arrived. Hi, I'm Chris Glenn. I'm an Australian, but I've been living in Japan for about 24 years, so about half my life here. And one of the great things about living in Japan, even after all this time, is that no matter where you go or whatever you try and do, there's bound to be something interesting and exciting to discover. Chris's extensive career as a radio DJ in both Australia and Japan spans 30 years. He has an avid interest in Japanese history and frequently visits castles around the country. I haven't been to Osaka all that much, or particularly the Wakayama area, so today we're going to see what we can find that's new and exciting. Let's go on a train cruise. The airport has direct access to the JR and Nankai stations. Chris first heads to downtown Osaka on the Nankai line. This is fantastic. Have a look at that. You know, Japan has got its long history and a deep culture, and yet there's so many futuristic things as well. Look at this. It looks like something out of 2001, a space odyssey, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. That looks like a giant robot's coming roaring down the line at you. Isn't that beautiful, though? The Repeat Limited Express derives its name and pronunciation from the German word for rapid. A fusion of planes and steam trains, its futuristic design looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Train fans nicknamed it the Iron Mask from its front appearance. It is almost like an aircraft, isn't it? Look. How cool is that? That's great, isn't it? <laughs> great, isn't it? Wouldn't find this on trains in any other country, I don't think. Here we go. Easy. Ah, oh, the seats are nice and wide, they're comfortable. You almost feel like you've got to put on a seatbelt and ready for takeoff. <laughs> And our trip begins. True to its name, Repeat dashes to the center of Osaka in about 30 minutes. As we approach the city center, Chris sees a distinctive landmark. Oh. There you go, there's one of the, the symbols of Osaka. Well, there you go. There's the Tenkaku. It's this huge lookout tower. 
Chris gets off at Shin Imamiya Station for a better look. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's quite magnificent, isn't it, really? The Tsutenkaku Tower, the symbol of Osaka, was built in the hope for recovery after the destruction of World War II with financial help from the locals. Standing 103 meters tall, it is the pride of Osaka. There's not so many people here at this time of morning, and yet some of the cafes are open and even some of the bars as well. Well, I guess people get thirsty in the morning too, don't they? It's 8 a.m., but despite the early hour, many of the district's drinking establishments are open for business. Chris goes into one. Shinsekai has been a bustling shopping and amusement district since before the war. Laborers from around the country gathered in neighboring areas after World War II, bolstering Japan's post-war economic recovery. To meet night shift workers' needs, an increased number of eateries began opening early for business. This establishment is crowded and buzzing with conversation, even this early in the day. Most of the loyal regulars come for the manager. Shinsekai is popularly known for kushikatsu, deep-fried, skewered meat, seafood, and vegetables. The ingredients are dipped in batter for added volume. At around 100 yen per skewer, it is popular with people from all walks of life. Kushikatsu are dunked in the restaurant's special sauce, but no double dipping is allowed. Delicious. Yes. Yes. Delicious. Yes, we. This is fantastic. <laughs> Experience a facet of Osakan life at a friendly Japanese style eatery. Hopping with life any time of day. Tsutenkaku has long watched over Osaka's prosperity. But nearby Abe no Harukas now towers over it. Completed in 2014, this skyscraper stands at 300 meters tall. There it is, Abino Harukas. Japan's tallest building at the moment. Isn't that amazing? The elevator speeds from the 16th floor to the observation deck in less than a minute. This is incredible. Oh. This is fantastic. And we've got the best weather ever for it as well. Look at that, conditions are so clear. That's fantastic. Chris takes in the sweeping view of Greater Osaka and its neighboring prefectures. You can also see the, the trains coming through. Just a train coming through behind that building over there. Looks like a toy train set, doesn't it, from up here? You know, the trains look small, 
the cars look small, the buildings look small. It's, it's like looking down on a huge diorama, isn't it? Chris spots a cute little train in the jumble of the city. Oh, just down there you can see one of the a little tram. Now, if we get on board one of those, that'll take us somewhere interesting, I'm sure. Let's see if we can get on board one of those. The Hankai Tramway starts at Tennoji Ekimai Station. The latest model, called the Sakai Tram, was introduced in 2014. This is also pretty futuristic looking, isn't it? Riding a tram like this, you get to see the, the city pretty closely as well. And we're sort of going through the area where people live, so you get to see the average homes and places where they go shopping each day. The streetcar makes its way down the middle of the road, away from Abe no Harukas. Hankai Tramway began operating in 1900 and has since become a popular mode of transport among locals. ジンジン電車が好きですか好き何が好きですかジンジン電車が好きなるほどこれで良くなるほんと小さい頃からもう毎日のようにお家に電車見てたんですほんかたんほとんとかいうの大好きなんですそうですかジンジン電車の運転手
Once you have the three stones, together they have the power to make your prayers come true. Chris and the boys search eagerly for the stones. I'll tell you that stall shit there. I'll put it under Kate Dunn in there. Put him out of it. Okay, up to one. Put it animal night, you got the door set it. I don't want to get that. 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 With some help from the boys, Chris has all three stones. The shrine maids will make them into an amulet for him. Hopefully this will bring us luck on this particular trip as well. We'll see how it goes. One of the little things that makes Japan special. Passing through the rural landscape, we leave Osaka behind and head for Mount Koya in Wakayama Prefecture. Here at Hashimoto Station, we board a special sightseeing train. Green and red looks good, doesn't it? And there's the sign. How's that? It says Tenku, doesn't it? Tenku gently departs for Mount Koya, a difference in altitude of 443 meters. Designed to ensure passengers enjoy a leisurely trip, the windows are larger than usual to offer excellent views of the passing scenery. And the seats are made from wood for a warm atmosphere. People can also kick back Japanese style to enjoy the view. <laughs> The train has a deck from which passengers can admire the landscape and breathe in the fresh mountain air. Well, we seem to be moving towards the mountains. This uh, deck area is quite nice, actually. It'd be great in summer. In winter, it's a little bit breezy, a little bit cold, but... It's nice getting some fresh air anyway. And just looking at the old houses and as we're moving up towards the mountains there, just the scenery is just changing so much. From here, the gradient gets steeper as the train progresses up the mountainside. And you can hear the noise of the engine and the wheels pushing this thing up the hill. It's that, that squealing, howling noise that is... You can just hear a bit of it now. Well, I've been told it's going to get even louder and even stronger as we get higher up the hill here. The train weaves through the rugged terrain towards Mount Koya, or Koya-san as it is called in Japanese. We've arrived. After a 40-minute ride on Tenku, we reach the last stop. He did a good job, didn't he? Bringing us up that hill like that. Ah, Tenku Berimachi, thank you, there you go. Are we going to make this one? Should we get on here? Oops. <laughs> Be careful. 
Have a look at the angle this is on. That's pretty steep. This is just the train itself. We are almost at the peak. The swift cable car trip will take us up a further 328 meters in elevation. This is unbelievable. I've never ridden anything like this before. But apparently it goes from about 10 up to 30 degrees on the incline. A little bit scary, but it's fun. We have arrived at Koyasan Station. 867 meters above sea level. Koyasan is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Kukai, one of Japan's most influential monks, established this sacred area 1,200 years ago. The more than 100 temples on the mountain have welcomed ascetics and people who venerate Kukai for centuries. The main approach to Okunoin, where Kukai is said to have passed into eternity, is flanked by more than 200,000 graves. In a way, it's a bit sad. I mean, we don't know whose graves they are or how long they've been here, but you can feel the history. People from all walks of life, from monks and people of influence to average citizens, have their remains here. Chris comes across an unexpected grave. Oh! Ishida Mitsunari. In 1600, the biggest samurai battle ever was fought at a place called Sekigahara. Now, the country had broken up into two halves, the east and the west. Now, running the west was the guy who won, Tokugawa Ieyasu, he became shogun. Facing him was Ishida Mitsunari. For a Japanese history buff like Chris, Finding the grave of his favorite military commander from the Warring States period is very moving. So to come here to get close to his memorial stone, to me, is special. That's why I took a few moments just to, to pray for his soul. He fought for Japan. Oh, now this looks pretty special, doesn't it? Temples operate lodgings for ascetics and pilgrims to Koyasan. Renge Join is one such temple accommodation, which has a history of more than eight centuries. This is Chris's room for the night. These lodgings were once solely for monks and the faithful. But now they open their doors to tourists, too. Dinner is shojin ryori, a vegetarian cuisine that complies with Buddhist precepts. Denge Jōin is popular with foreign tourists, and for good reason. These young boys Half of their body were naked to be trained for the coldness. So in such... Kiyomi Soeda is the 95-year-old walking encyclopedia of Renge Join. Soeda graduated from a Tokyo university with a major in English. She has put her language ability to good use, giving lectures on Kukai and Koyasan's history to the temple's foreign guests. 
for more than 70 years. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that I'm in the same room as I feeling the same presence. So, um, yeah, bless her all the best and um, wish she lives many more years to come. <laughs> Through Soeda's efforts, foreign tourists learn about the mystic charm of Koyasan and become repeat visitors. Kiyomi san desu yo ne. I believe you speak very good English. Yes, I think it is. A, a little. <laughs> quite a lot of English, I think. <laughs> what do foreigners who come to Koyasan, mm. what do they feel when they come here? Mm. Scenery. Yes. Is satisfactory. Yes. Yes. And uh, temple's life. Right. Yes. They say, well, this is real Ko uh, Japan. Yes. 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 Guests can also experience meditation and other aspects of monastic life at pilgrim lodgings. Just listening to nothing but your own breathing and the sounds of the spirituality of everybody in the room together. That again is something very, very special. And for that reason, I'll be coming back here again sometime soon. Chris decides to play it by ear today and go where the trains take him. First, he heads west. Well, it looks like we've got pretty good conditions for our cruise today. I'm not exactly sure where we're going, but wherever we go, I'm sure we're going to find something pretty interesting anyway. Chris gets off at Wakayama Station to change trains. Believe it or not, there's actually a station around here, it might even be this station, where a cat is actually the station master. A cat as a station master? Let's find out more. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> a real cat. <laughs> real cat. Apparently, it's a real cat. Let's go see. <laughs> that train, it's all dicked out like a cat. Chris's next train, Tamadensha, has a feline theme. Wherever you look on board, you'll see adorable cats. Tama is one of the most popular names given to cats in Japan. <laughs> Have a look inside. It, it's not a train, it's a big living room. Tama-chan seats. And have a look down here, behind this chair here. See the shape of the cat's just behind the, the seat here. <laughs> Through to the next carriage. Konnichiwa. <laughs> it's like a mobile library, isn't it? I'm not sure, but this could actually be Tama-chan's house. It's really quite wonderful, isn't it? Everywhere you look, there's Tamachan. Little cats and Tamachan all over the place. I reckon this would be a pretty fun train to ride, don't you? So Chris makes a detour to the last stop on the Kishigawa line to meet the feline station master, affectionately known as Tamachan. <laughs> <laughs> we 
We arrive at Kishi Station, the final stop on this line. If you take a close look at the station building, you will see that it resembles a cat. But where is the feline station master? Nitama-chan, the station master. She clocks in for work five days a week and watches over the comings and goings at the station. Visitors can dress up in a station staff uniform for a commemorative photo. Kishi Station's previous station master was a cat named Tama that was kept by the station kiosk staff. Due to his local popularity, he was bestowed with the honorary title of station master in 2007. After that, myriads of visitors from around the country and even abroad came to meet him. This line was operating in the red at the time. But thanks to Tamachan and his widespread fame, the number of passengers skyrocketed and he became the champion of the area. He died in 2015 at the age of 16. Tamachan saved the Kishigawa line from abolishment, and the trains continue to serve locals today. Chris heads back to Wakayama Station, then south along the coast. Here, Chris is greeted with a totally different view. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? All of the mountains have been terraced. They've actually cut into the mountains so that they can grow fruit. I'm not sure whether it's mandarin mikan or whether it's oranges, but they're quite large and they look pretty tasty, don't they? Arida is one of Japan's leading producers of mikan, a type of mandarin that was first cultivated here more than four centuries ago. The area has few plains, so the farmers use the mountainsides for cultivating the orchards. Chris cannot resist the temptation to look around. So he gets off at the next station. Look at this. Mikan, only 100 yen, so that's about what? One American dollar or so? Got 100 yen? Oh. Choose a bag of Mikan, and you're on your way once again. Well, here's lunch anyway. The gas stand worker tells Chris how to find the farmer who produced these mikan. Isn't that a beautiful scene? You've got the trees here, the old house, and then the terraces of fruit at the back there. Fujita-san! Fujita-san. Hi. 
おはようございます。向こうに行ってもいいですか。あ、どうぞ、来てください。この道を歩いてきてください。この道ですか。はい、そうです。this route。let's give it a try anyway。Oh, it's a little bit steep. Oops, I'm slippery. Be careful. The path to reach them is quite rugged. This is quite an adventure, isn't it? I mean, climbing up this very steep mountain with Hardly any footholds here, and steep drops down into the cliffs, and surrounded by the、uh, the mikan. Oh, ah, konnichiwa. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Hi. Chris meets eighth generation farmer Mitsuru Fujita and his family. すごいところに仕事してるんですね。いいね。今年のみかんはどうですか美味しいです美味しいいいね畑でね、うん、収穫しているともうつい食べてしまいますあ、そうですかはい<笑>畑で食べるの一番美味しいじゃないですか美味しいです The steep slopes have good exposure to the sun and the soil has good drainage so conditions are ideal They give Chris a freshly picked みかん to taste とてもジューシーな感じですね。<笑>いただきます。酸っぱいんじゃない,、うん、ゃないですか。大丈夫ですか。最高。<笑><笑>うん。めっちゃ美味しいですよね。<笑>ここに育ってるんで、はい、もう取り立てのみかんでないと。で取り立てのみかんは酸味もあってこれはねこれはやっぱりここしか食べられないですよね、うん、そうですねそうですねこの味を,、ね、味を入れて、はい、ここに来て食べていただける味ですなるほど、はい、The Fujitas are busy every day during peak harvest season between November and January The entire family, even the grandchildren, help harvest the crop. Each crate of mikan weighs around 20 kilograms, so lugging them is tough work. But they have a great little helper. これ一体何ですかモノレールです<笑>これで上へこれで上へこれで上へこれで上へこれで上へこれで上へこれで上へこれで上へです。As times changed, motorized vehicles became the main mode of delivery, and the line was discontinued in 2002. The Aridagawa Railway Park preserves and maintains a working train. Visitors can ride the train through the park and experience train travel of yesteryear. Back at the station, 
Chris receives a bit of interesting information on the local fishing industry. Well, that's one step of the adventure. Let's see what we can find next. And we're away. Chris travels one stop to the station closest to the fishing port where Tachiuo is caught. You seem to be at a big river mouth at the moment. You can smell the, the sea, the saltiness. He arrives at Minoshima Fishing Port, one of Wakayama's largest. Konnichiwa. Tachiyo wa geto shimashita ka? Tachiyo wa geto shimashita ka? <laughs> this long, shiny fish resembles a sword, or tachi in Japanese. And uo is one way of saying fish. Hence the name tachi uo, or cutlass fish. It can grow up to one meter in length. The city of Arida is known for tachi uo. And the annual haul is about 950 tons, the largest in Japan. The fishermen leave port at 3 a.m. while it's still dark and return in the late afternoon. Fishing here is a family enterprise and the women await their arrival. This is the Tanaka family. Three generations make their living off the sea. Unloading is teamwork, and they all skillfully work together in harmony. They quickly load the catch onto the trailer and rush to the market as fast as they can. This breed of fish spoils easily, so they must make haste. The brokers, with rigorous eyes, scrutinize catches for size and color and make their bids. Mrs. Tanaka gives Chris a treat. Tachiuo sashimi. Since tachiuo goes bad quickly, this delicacy can only be enjoyed in this area. Mm. The meat has a, a certain crispness to it. It's a very, not a hard meat at all. It's, it's very soft, but it's firm. This is nice, very nice. Which of the top of the meat is Local industries bind families together. A heartwarming sight in Arida, Wakayama Prefecture. The last train we ride on our journey is the Kuroshio Limited Express. It is fitted with a viewing lounge from which passengers can admire the sea. This is a great idea, facing outwards to see the scenery instead of facing forwards like most trains. And what beautiful scenery it is too. We are almost at the end of our journey through Osaka and Wakayama.
we arrive at our final destination, Shirahama Station, located in a famous hot spring area. Here, Chris goes to a hot spring that boasts a history of 1,300 years. The outdoor spring has a dynamic view overlooking the Pacific Ocean. This is absolutely fantastic. The sea's roaring in here. We're sitting in a hot spring surrounded by mountains and nature. This is beautiful. And this train cruise has been absolutely fantastic. There are so many great train lines and they'll take you to some wonderful places to meet some wonderful people. And meeting people on this trip was fantastic. Those people work hard. The train lines serve those people. That's what really makes it come alive. Riding so many fascinating trains. That's one of the great things about train travel here in Japan. Train crews, fun time! How did you enjoy our rail trip to city, mountain, and sea in Osaka and Wakayama? Traveling by train is the perfect opportunity to meet the friendly locals. <laughs>